Comparison between gasoline and diesel engines. In this video, we take a closer look at the key differences between a gasoline engine and a diesel engine. Unlike the gasoline engine, which runs on petrol, the diesel engine uses diesel as fuel. However, the basic operating cycles, intake, compression, power and exhaust, remain unchanged. The main difference is in the ignition and combustion process of the fuel-air mixture. In gasoline engines, ignition is initiated by a spark from a spark plug, also known as spark ignition. In diesel engines, however, the diesel-air mixture ignites itself due to the high temperatures during compression, known as compression ignition. Since the compressed air-fuel mixture in gasoline engines is ignited by the spark plug, the temperature during compression must be below the self-ignition temperature of the mixture or premature explosion will occur. In diesel engines, the temperature during compression must exceed the auto-ignition temperature of the diesel-air mixture. To achieve the required compression temperatures, diesel engines have much higher compression ratios than gasoline engines. While gasoline engines typically have compression ratios of around 10 to 1, diesel engines have double that, at around 20 to 1. The higher compression ratio results in a higher ultimate pressure, which makes the force applied to the piston in a diesel engine more effective, resulting in a higher efficiency. The efficiency of gasoline engines is about 35%, while that of diesel engines is about 45%. Diesel engines create the necessary fuel-air mixture exclusively through internal mixture formation via injection. Instead of spark plugs, diesel engines have injectors that inject the fuel after compression, causing it to ignite. In gasoline engines, the combustible mixture can be prepared externally in a carburetor and then fed into the engine cylinder, or internally in the case of direct injection gasoline engines, where the mixture is made combustible only inside the cylinder. In the case of internal mixture formation, gasoline is also injected by means of injectors. In gasoline engines, ignition occurs via spark ignition, regardless of whether the mixture is formed internally or externally. There are also differences in the way engine power is controlled between gasoline and diesel engines. In gasoline engines, the throttle valve regulates the amount of charge entering the engine during the intake process. In naturally aspirated engines, the throttle valve is located in the intake manifold. Depending on its position, more or less charge passes through, ready to ignite. This is called quantitative mixture control. The air-fuel ratio remains the same, but the total amount of charge entering the engine varies with the position of the throttle valve. In contrast, diesel engines do not regulate power by the amount of intake charge and therefore do not have throttle valves. Instead, diesel engines always take in the same amount of air, and power is controlled by varying the amount of diesel fuel injected and ignited. This method is called qualitative mixture control. The reason why diesel engines must always draw in the same amount of air is due to the principle of compression ignition. To reach the required auto-ignition temperature, a constant air mass must be present. If the air mass in the cylinder is too small, the initial pressure before compression would be insufficient, resulting in insufficient final pressure and temperature after compression. There are also differences in the engine speeds that can be achieved between gasoline and diesel engines. Diesel engines typically cannot reach the high speeds that gasoline engines can. The lower speeds are due to the compression ignition principle. Because diesel fuel is injected just before reaching auto-ignition temperature, it must mix homogeneously with the air in a short time before ignition. At high speeds, there isn't enough time for proper mixing, resulting in suboptimal combustion. Therefore, diesel engines cannot operate effectively at very high speeds. In both gasoline and diesel engines, a certain air-fuel ratio is required for the fuel-air mixture to be combustible and for combustion to be as complete as possible. For example, 1 gram of gasoline requires 14.7 grams of air for complete combustion, while 1 gram of diesel requires 14.5 grams of air. Combustion is inefficient if there is too little or too much air, resulting in the formation of pollutants. An excess of air in the cylinder is called a lean mixture, while an excess of fuel is called a rich mixture. The air-fuel ratio lambda, also known as air number, describes the excess or lack of air during combustion. The lambda value is the ratio of the actual air mass to the stoichiometric minimum air mass. A lambda value of 0.92 means that there is 8% less air mass available than required for complete combustion. A lambda value of 1.05 means there is 5% more air in the cylinder than necessary. 
The air fuel ratio has a significant effect on combustion speed, which is the speed at which the flame front spreads during combustion. Consequently, it also affects engine performance. Gasoline engines can only operate effectively with air numbers between 0.7 and 1.3. Outside this range, the gasoline air mixture is no longer ignitable, unlike diesel. The situation is different for diesel engines. Diesel engines generally operate with significantly more excessive air than gasoline engines, and therefore with a higher air fuel ratio, ranging from 1.3 to as high as 6. The reason for this is again related to the auto ignition of diesel fuel. A purely stoichiometric air fuel ratio of lambda equal to 1 throughout the cylinder would result in a local rich mixture near the injectors during the injection process. The fuel would no longer auto ignite in this area. In contrast, in a gasoline engine, the air fuel mixture can be homogenized by the carburetor prior to ignition, as the combustion process is initiated later by the spark plug. A fuel air ratio of less than 1.3 in diesel engines carries the risk of soot formation, which must be avoided at all costs. If you have ever covered the exhaust of a diesel engine for a moment, you have probably noticed a huge black cloud of soot. This soot formation is related to the lack of air that occurs when the exhaust pipe is blocked, as the accumulated exhaust gases prevent fresh air from entering the cylinder. Please do not attempt this. The air supply is controlled by a so-called lambda sensor, which measures the residual oxygen in the exhaust gases and compares it to the oxygen content of the outside air. Based on this comparison, it is possible to draw conclusions about the completeness of the combustion and thus about the lack or excess of air. Depending on the value, the air-fuel ratio is adjusted. In principle, the combustion of fossil fuels such as gasoline and diesel produces the harmful greenhouse gas carbon dioxide. In addition, the fuel-air mixture in the engine is never completely homogeneous. As a result, there are always areas where a combustible air-fuel ratio is not achieved and the fuel remains unburned. The greater the oxygen deficiency, the more unburned fuel remains. In the case of incomplete combustion, the toxic carbon monoxide is produced in greater quantities. In the three-way catalytic converter, toxic carbon monoxide, unburned hydrocarbons and nitrogen oxides are largely reduced. The nitrogen oxides release oxygen atoms, which are needed for the oxidation of carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons. However, this requires that the three chemicals be present in the exhaust in a balanced ratio to fully react with each other. Of course, this is not always the case, which means that not all pollutants can be filtered out by the catalytic converter. The high affinity of oxygen to react with carbon monoxide prevents the reduction of nitrogen oxides when there is an excess of oxygen in the engine cylinder. As a result, Nitrogen oxide emissions increase when there is an excess of oxygen. Because of the high excess of air in diesel engines, they are equipped with special diesel oxidation catalysts. Diesel engines also produce high concentrations of soot particles, which are trapped by soot particle filters. The performance of an engine is determined by the amount of combustible fuel that enters the cylinder. The more fuel is burned, the more heat is released, which can ultimately be converted into work. A key factor here is the size of the engine's displacement, as a larger displacement means more charge in the cylinder and therefore, more fuel can be ignited. However, the displacement cannot be increased indefinitely, as larger engines would require too much space and become too heavy. Another way to increase engine power is to increase the amount of charge entering the cylinder. For a given displacement, the charge must be forced into the cylinder under pressure, so that more combustible charge enters the cylinder. This can be achieved, for example, by using compressors driven by the crankshaft. The principle is essentially the same as an air compressor. The air or charge is compressed and forced into the engine, creating more charge mass in the cylinder. Instead of being driven by the crankshaft, the compressor can also be driven by the exhaust gases, which is similar to a mini turbine. In this case, it is called a turbocharger. Engines where power is increased by increasing the intake pressure are called forced induction engines. However, the compression of the charge in compressors or turbochargers leads to an undesirable increase in temperature. This would counteract the power increase and the effect would be neutralized. For this reason, the compressed and heated charge must be cooled before it enters the engine. This is achieved by means of intercoolers. As mentioned earlier, diesel engines operate at a significantly higher air-fuel ratio than gasoline engines which means that there is generally less fuel in the cylinder for the same amount of charge. In addition, as also mentioned earlier, 
diesel engines have lower engine speeds, so less fuel is ignited in the same amount of time. Both of these factors reduce the power output of the diesel engine compared to the gasoline engine. So for non-turbocharged diesel engines, the only way to compensate for this power loss is to increase displacement. Therefore, non-supercharged diesel engines require significantly more displacement than non-supercharged gasoline engines to achieve the same power output. The larger displacement, in turn, results in greater torque, so that for the same power, non-supercharged diesel engines have greater torque than non-supercharged gasoline engines. For example, a diesel engine requires a displacement of around 2.5 liters for an output of 100 kilowatts at a speed of 5,000 revolutions per minute. In contrast, a petrol engine only requires a displacement of around 1.5 liters for the same output at a speed of 7,000 revolutions per minute. The engine torque is about 190 newton meters for a diesel engine and about 135 newton meters for a gasoline engine. However, the displacement and therefore the engine size of a diesel engine can be kept as small as that of a petrol engine with the same power output if the relatively small displacement is compensated for by appropriate turbocharging. Turbocharged engines can therefore be built significantly smaller than non-turbocharged engines with the same power output. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching.